Yo, 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 what is up, guys? It's coming back here again tonight with another video, back with another recap of the NBA games from today. There are a ton of games, so I'm not going to mess around too much at the beginning, and I'm kind of just going to get into it. But I want to thank you guys so much for the support in the channel recently. It's been incredible. My last few videos have done really, really well, and I just want to thank you guys so much for all that support. I got a pretty fun video coming out hopefully tomorrow, potentially Friday, but hopefully tomorrow. Uh, looking at y'all's jump shots and stuff like that might also include my own jump shot. So if you're looking forward to that, uh, let me know in the comments below and look out for that tomorrow or Friday. But for tonight's video, like I said, a lot of games, so there's a lot of things I want to talk about. Originally, I was going to focus this, focus this video about Joel Embiid, and I still am going to talk about him and the Sixers win over the Nets. But I mainly want to focus on Luka Doncic in this video. I think Joel Embiid, I think I want to make a whole video talking about how he has went from all-star to MVP candidate over the course of this season, what has changed in his game, how he's developed over the course of this offseason into this season from last season, and just really what is the difference overall in his performance. So I think I want to make a whole video talking about that because I think I could make a whole video talking about that, things I really don't want to cover in a game recap like this. Instead, I'm going to go over more of an overview of the games, but I want to focus on Luka Doncic. And the reason I want to focus on him is not because he had an incredible stat line. He did have a good stat line. He had um, typical Luka numbers, but I really want to focus on him because of the way that he wills his team to wins. Look at the Mavericks aren't that good. They really aren't. They've got really solid role players. Um, Chris Ups Porzingis is pretty inconsistent at times. When he's on, he's on. When he's off, he's really off. So he has a lot of inconsistencies. They're not very good defensively. They're really good offensively. But Luka wills them to wins. The reason I didn't pick Luka Doncic coming into the season as my MVP pick like a lot of people were is because I didn't think the Mavericks had the ability to win games like LeBron James did, who, is who I ended up picking as my MVP. You could have also talked about a Jokic with the Nuggets. A Joel Embiid was, in hindsight would have been a great pick, uh, potentially. Uh, all these different guys, but Luka Doncic was probably the most popular pick. And the reason I didn't pick him is because I didn't think the Mavericks quite had the ability to get to the uh, playoff, not necessarily the playoff success, but the playoff seeding that is needed to win the MVP award. Typically, it only goes to top teams. Uh, the players aren't top, that top team. But Luka is still insane. And before the season, I knew I was like, okay, this MVP hype is valid because we've seen what Luka can do. And tonight again, he showed that. Not in his individual performance but at the end of the game Grayson Allen missed two clutch free throws to put the game away the Mavericks are down two and Grayson Allen goes to the line with two free throws and he misses both of them giving the Mavericks an opportunity to win the game he could have put it away and he didn't and you know what great players do when you don't put them away they kill you and they beat you and that's exactly what Luka does Luka hits a a one-handed floating three it was like a floater from the three-point line. I don't know why my screen just shifted to green. Um, he hits a floater from the three-point line. Basically, his whole body is horizontal um, on this shot. Please go look it up if you haven't looked at it yet. But it was one of the most impressive game winners I've ever seen. And it just shows how much Luka is willing to do to win, how much he wants to win. Uh, something a lot of people complain about is the fact that Luka complains a lot, uh, which is a weird <laughs> conundrum there. And he does. He does complain a lot to the referees. But because he really wants to win, he really wants these wins. He wants to get his team to the playoffs. He wants that playoff success. Luka Doncic has the will to win of a veteran who has gone 15 seasons in the league without a ring. Um, and he's like in his third season. Uh, Luka is unreal. And these moments he has, he's already building a legacy. This is now the third time he has hit an insane game winner. We can talk about the Celtics game. We could talk about the uh, Clippers game winner. And now this one. I might even be forgetting one, but those are the three that come to mind. All from that uh, like upper left elbow, like the space between the left elbow and the left corner three-point line. All from that area. If you let him get to that area with the game on the line, you're an idiot. You have to get Luka Doncic away from that area because he's going to make you pay. He has shown it now three times. You cannot let him get to that spot. It's like that uh, spot on the right elbow for Kyrie Irving, the same spot where he hit the three-pointer to eventually give the Cavs the finals win. So players have their spots. You can't let Luka get to that spot. But he's already building a legacy, and he hasn't had to, he hasn't done much. Now you could talk about last season where Luca hit the uh, he hit the game winner over the Clippers and nearly took down the Clippers. I don't want to say took them down actually. I want to say he they gave them a fight. Um, they brought them to six games. It was really hard fought. With that with Chris Ups Porzingis, maybe they push it to a game seven, maybe even win the series. But the fact that Luca with Chris Ups Porzingis hurt was single handedly willing his team to victories. It said a lot about him. What it shows is that. Luka's going to do pretty much any, anything he has to do to win, and he doesn't just put up individual stats, he elevates his team. Luka is going to go down as an all-time great. I'm going to call that right now, 
because in his first two seasons, he has shown something that like talking heads on like the media would call it probably the it factor. I don't know what else to call it. Um, he's shown an ability to win. He has shown an ability to will his team to wins and to find ways to make them happen. Great players, like I said, are going to find ways to make you pay and they're going to find ways to make impossible situations possible. That's what Luca does. And he is a joy to watch. I People down the line, are going to look at the when Luka Doncic was drafted and go, how the hell did so many teams pass on him? And I mean, like like the teams that pick that decide to not go for Luka Doncic, it's understandable. You have the um, the Suns at least. The Suns DeAndre Ayton's a great player, and the Suns are really good right now, so that's a justifiable pick. The Marvin Bagley pick's gonna be interesting because it looks like he might want to have Sacramento. If he wants out of Sacramento and he ends up leaving, or they trade him. It's going to go down as potentially one of the worst draft picks of all time, even if Marvin Bagley becomes a star because he's not in the Kings. And you could have had Luka Doncic instead of a player who kind of seems like he wants out of the situation anyways. And so people are going to look back and go, how the hell did Luka Doncic go third? And my answer is probably going to be, I don't know. I was on the boat that Luka Doncic should have gone third overall, or not third overall, should have gone first overall. My apologies. Uh, just the way he played overseas, the he felt like he had it. He came into the draft with that ability. It felt like Luka was destined to be great, and that's the way it feels right now. Luka might not win the MVP this season, and that's just because his team is not good. If his team was good, Luka would probably be one of the MVP frontrunners. He's been, I know he started the season slow, but he has been incredible, and he's continuing to build this legacy that it's a joy to watch. He's a player that you, you've got to appreciate his greatness. Don't let this be a situation where you don't appreciate how good Luka Doncic is, and it just flies past you. Because I can guarantee you, appreciating his greatness is going to be way more fun than way down the line being like, damn, Luke is retiring in like 20 seasons or whatever because until he plays till he's like 400. Um, you're going to be like, wow, I should have appreciated Luca more. And you're going to look back on those moments and be like, wow, why did I not appreciate that in the moment? This is an opportunity to appreciate him from the start of his career. Don't hate on the guy because he's good. It's way more fun to like these good players. I can promise you that. So I want to give Luka Doncic this shout out because I feel like I haven't talked about him a lot this season. And that's just because the Mavericks haven't been that good. If the Mavericks were better, I'd probably be talking about him more. But he deserves this, this shout out because he is special. He is perhaps the next face of the league. It's going to be probably him, maybe like Zion. Uh, we have Giannis, obviously, a guy like Jason Tatum. There are some really good players in the league. Lamelo Ball is a guy that seems to already be gathering a lot of attention outside of even like or like towards the casual fans and even outside of that to becoming more of a household name so maybe he has that potential but Luka Doncic is a guy who is going to be one of if not the faces of the league he is going to be a guy that people are going to emulate you you see little kids emulate uh Stephen Curry at the park they go a Curry shoot a three stuff like that the same way that when I was younger I yelled Kobe whenever I shot something they're going to be doing that with Luka I guarantee this generation right now is going to idolize Luka Doncic and that is cool it's really cool to watch this guy develop, and he is going to be one of the next greats. We have so much incredible young talent in this league, and Luke is probably the best out of all of it. And this is perhaps the most young talent we've seen in a very long time, maybe even ever. I, I'm not really sure. But just the talent we have in the league right now, and the fact that Luka Doncic is I don't think there's anyone who's going to tell you that there's someone that they would take on their team over Luka at that like under 25 range. If there is, then I don't know who it is because I wouldn't take any other guy. You could talk about Zion, maybe. I still wouldn't. I'd still take Luca. Um, yeah, Luca's just great. Appreciate him well. He's here, and I do. He's gonna end up winning a ring. He's gonna end up winning some MVPs. Um, it's pretty inevitable. And I think when all is said and done, Luka Doncic will be one of the greatest NBA players of all time. I'm gonna call that right now. Just a couple years into his career, that's how special I think he is. So that was a nine minute rant about Luka Doncic. Just that game winner just reminded me of how, of like how much I really need to talk about Luka and how much I wanted to emphasize how important it is to appreciate the greatness of a guy like Luka Doncic and how, where I see his career going. I don't see there's any, unless the, God forbid some like injury hit bug hits him. I don't see anything getting in the way of him being an all time great. So shout out to Luka Doncic. Um, outside of that, what else do I want to talk about? I'll talk about Net Sixers next. Um, the Nets made this closer than it should have been, honestly. Just Kyrie playing, no Harden, uh, no Aldridge, no Griffin, no Durant. Uh, this should have not have been this close, but they made a, a big run at the end. The Sixers were blowing them out, and credit to the Sixers, they pulled it off. I've said it a million times in my videos. Uh, good teams win ugly games. They're a good team. They won an ugly game. And credit to the Nets for keep continuing to fight. But 
Uh, this is a big win for the Sixers. That one seed is huge because you don't you want to play the eight seed and then like the Hawks, the Celtics. You don't want to have to play the Bucks in that second round before facing the Brooklyn Nets. You want to let the Nets and the Bucks duke it out, and then you assuming you finish the job in the second round, you get to play them in that Eastern Conference Finals. That is your goal if you're the 76ers. If you're the Nets, you might not care as much because you have guys who have been there and done that. If you're the Sixers, you don't want to risk anything. You want to get to that Eastern Conference Finals because you haven't been there with this core before. So you want to guarantee that you get there and give yourself an opportunity to beat whatever team comes out of that Bucks net series in a seven game series. You want to give yourself that chance. And so winning a game like this over the Nets, giving themselves a one game lead over the Nets is very important with very little time left in the season. Uh, it doesn't seem like the Nets care that much about what seed they end up. And that makes sense. They're like Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving. Um, they've been there before. They've been part of lower seed teams that have made it far anyway. So it doesn't really matter to them. I don't think I could also talk about James Harden. I just didn't even mention him. Uh, so yeah, the Nets don't feel like they care that much, but this game showed how much of a problem that Joel Embiid is going to be in a series with the Brooklyn Nets. We've we've talked about it. That's the main thing people talk about when they're talking about a matchup between these two teams. And that's because, as we can see, it's a big deal. Uh, Joel Embiid just abused anyone they put on him. Um, and they don't have anyone to stop him. And it's going to be up to Embiid between a, in a series between these two teams to be the best player on the floor. Joel Embiid has to be the best player on the floor pretty much every single night or they're going to lose fast. This team is stacked, the Brooklyn Nets, Kyrie Irving, James Harden, Kevin Durant. These players are like incredible players, top 15 guys. Embiid has to be the best player on the court every single night, or he has to be at worst the second best player on the court, or the Sixers are gonna lose because that's just how stacked the Brooklyn Nets are. Tobias Harris is a guy that isn't talked about enough when you talk about the Philadelphia 76ers and why they're so good. Uh, Tobias Harris is just phenomenal. He is be He's probably been their most like consistent player out, or he definitely has been their most consistent player outside of Joel Embiid. He's probably been their second best player a lot of the time this season. Um, he's probably been their most clutch player, to be honest, outside of like a couple situations like you had that Joel Embiid three against the Utah Jazz. But Tobias Harris, a lot of games, is their closer. He's been really good. He has this connection with Doc Rivers, it just seems like so. I, I want to see a series of this. I really want to see a series between these two teams. I'll be pretty disappointed if we don't get one, but I think it's going to happen. So I look forward to it, especially since they'll both be at full health. Obviously, like I said, that's missing a ton of people tonight. So it doesn't tell us a lot, but it tells us a little bit. So, and like I said, if you guys want to see a full video about Joel Embiid and what makes him so good, please let me know. Um, outside of that, some of these games are just gross. I don't really want to talk about them much. Um, uh, I'll talk about I'll talk about the uh, I'll talk about the Thunder game. Um, we got blown out uh, by 38 points. Uh, Stephen Curry is ridiculous. He might be playing the best basketball of almost anyone in the NBA right now. He's definitely been probably been a top five. Actually, he definitely has been a top five player this season. You could argue top three, maybe even top two or top one. But Curry's been incredible, and it sucks to see that he doesn't have a ton of help on some nights. Obviously, tonight, playing the Thunder without Dort, SGA, Horford, the usual guys. And so they killed us, um, which is understandable. Curry had a, a third quarter where he went 6 of 6 from 3 and 8 of 8 from the field, and he just murdered us. That was expected. But the real benefit from this game as a Thunder fan is we now have the fifth best odds in the lottery. With the Cavaliers win, we are in sole possession of that. And the Magic got a win over the Bulls. So now the Thunder are only two, one and a half or two games out of a top four pick, um, which would be incredible because that would tie us for the best odds to get the number one overall pick. The Thunder are tanking much faster than you might expect. I know the whole meme all season was the Thunder don't know how to tank. And in the past, I've talked about how that's okay to get player development, but I'm happy that now at the end of the season here, we're both getting player development for those guys who didn't get to play much in the first half of the season. Talk about Darius Baisley, who's getting the opportunity some nights to be our top guy like he was tonight, and he played phenomenally. Uh, Moses Brown's getting opportunities. Uh, Lou Dort, we saw last night with 42 points, got opportunities. I'm happy these guys are getting opportunities and we're losing games. I think this is we're executing this tank thing at the end of the season perfectly. I hope we can get into a top four, top three pick situation, but we'll see where we end up just <laughs> praying that that Rockets pick. Uh, falls to five. I'm going to also do a live lottery reaction to everything because I think that would be hilarious whether we get the pick or whether we don't. So let me know if you want to see that and it'll probably be here on YouTube. I'll probably live stream it on here. So I'll have to figure that out at some point. But yeah, prepare for that <laughs> live lottery reaction. Uh, it's going to be one of my better videos, I think. So um, yeah, outside of that, 
like I said, a lot of very ugly games. Reggie Jackson hit a game winner for the Clippers over the Pistons. Uh, the Clippers are on fire. I believe they're 7-0 in games that Rajon Rondo has played. Um, he hasn't played phenomenally, but he's been good for them, which is cool to see. He's definitely been better than he's been on the Atlanta Hawks. And the Clippers are rolling right now. The Clippers look like a force. Uh, like I mentioned in videos past, that last year's Clippers team didn't feel like that true contender that a lot of people said they were to me. I don't know what it was, but this season, the Clippers feel real to me. I could see this Clippers team winning the Western Conference. Um, unfortunately, with Jamal Murray's injury, the Western Conference has become a lot more wide open in terms of uh, removing another team from the equation. I would love to see a series between the Clippers and the Suns, Lakers, or Jazz, any three of those teams. I think those four are the four teams that are going to end up in that second round of the playoffs, and I think those are going to be some incredible series. I think we're in for an incredible uh, Western Conference playoffs as well as Eastern Conference, but focusing on the Western Conference, um, just imagine like maybe even a Clippers-Lakers second round, uh, Suns-Jazz, two small market teams that one of them could advance, one of, if not both of them, could advance to their first finals in a very, uh, very long time, maybe even ever, no. No, it's not. They um, they they could go to the finals. Is basically what I'm trying to say. So I'm excited for that. Excited for those two teams. Uh, Julius Randle is really good for the Knicks. That's what I'm going to say about him. Um, Zion's also really good, but the Knicks are the better team than the Pelicans right now. The Pacers. Uh, took a lot of scoring to beat that Rockets team. Giving up 124 points to the Houston Rockets is not good. And uh, the Pacers feel like a team that might miss the playoffs. Which is crazy to say because before the season, if you had told me the Pacers were going to miss the playoffs, I would have said you were wrong and an idiot. And now here, here we are. They're just not uh, quite performing. Like I said, they did win tonight by eight points. But it feels like this Pacers team should be better. And I think part of that is the fact that they're missing TJ Warren. But, they, but like TJ McConnell's playing great basketball. Miles Turner has been like a defensive player of the year candidate. Uh, DeMontis Sabonis was an all-star. Brogdon looked like an all-star for the first half of the season. They have Karis LeVert. It just feels like this team should be better. Um, maybe they'll figure it out. Maybe they won't, but I don't know. This Pacers team just doesn't quite feel as good as they should. Uh, the Rockets are quickly trying to get that first overall pick. Um, I wouldn't mind if they end up in that one spot because then it's basically a coin flip to see who gets their pick, us or them, whether it falls to five or not. Once again, that lottery, <laughs> LR thing's going to be interesting. So I think that's all I want to talk about with the games today. Shout out Russell Westbrook getting another triple double favorite player of all time. Obviously, um, the magic beating the bulls, uh, helping the thunder out in their journey for their, uh, top four pick. Um, the Bulls, man, they got to get together. Uh, I still think the Vucevic trade was a good trade for them. They need to get together in the offseason, though. They need a playmaking point guard, someone to control the tempo of the game, because a lot of times they get frazzled and they cannot recover. So uh, that's pretty much all I want to say about the game today. Let me know what you thought about the games. Let me know what you thought about my talk about Luka Doncic. Do you want to see that Joel Embiid video? Uh, do you want to see my live reaction to the draft lottery when that does happen? And I will see you guys later. Real one, say it back.